Hi, right, welcome folks. And uh, I hope to share a brief discussion with you on video games as art. Brief because you obviously can have a real long one, and we're not aiming for that, and as well as the fact that I hope I preach in the choir here. Even the Supreme Court st ruled back in 2011 that video games should be considered um, an art form and deserving of First Amendment safeguards, such as also books, plays, other media that uh, preceded them. So I'd like to dive into that subject, and we're going to discuss a number of video games and the ways that I've been surprised at in perceiving this art form. I mean, even in the last few years compared to stuff that came beforehand. And I mentioned The Last of Us and Life is Strange because I intend to discuss a little more in depth of those. Maybe give spoilers, but you know what? I'll warn you when you get to that point, because if you haven't played those games, you really want to dive in and check them out. But we're going to mention a number of others as well, including at least one from way back in the Commodore 64 age. Uh, because the modern world does not exist without disclaimers, there's my disclaimer. I do not own any copyrights to these videos uh, that are being discussed. They have their own respective copyright owners. They're just being brought up as part of the discussion. So, we're cool? Now, when we're going to discuss computer games as an art form, uh, you need to view games such as this one here, That Dragon Cancer. And this is not a game about defeating some human or alien bad guy. This was not a game about racking up points. This was a game developed by a couple who had to watch their child suffer. And this was a real life struggle translated into a video game to bring that message, to bring that experience to other people. I happened to be watching the Game Awards and when this one won the uh, uh, Games for Impact Award, and I was so happy. I was almost teary-eyed. Now, of course, I've known for a long time. I felt that you know, video games are an art form. But let's trace this route of thinking from a more recent direction. Obviously, there are people that were making it popular off Twitch, YouTube, to stream video games and play video games. Okay. Starting streaming for my guild. I ended up deciding to go with mostly some action-related games, or at least any game that I could get a decent amount of action in it. Those sure, they were like first-person shooters. Uh, anything else? The at the time the Tomb Raider game was rebooted, and so the very that very first Tomb Raider, I played that as my first two episodes, and eventually I was playing Rise of the Tomb Raider too, and uh, other games as well. So I chose to do action games, shooters, stuff like that, because I felt, you know, that was exciting enough for me and also exciting enough to hold the audience. But for these games, I wanted to keep the adrenaline going. Now, granted, a number of these games still might have had a nice story to them. And when you think of art form, well, yes, of course, they obviously could have had some nice artwork and digital backgrounds. But for the most part, these were action games. I was fighting, shooting, running, so it was very well, you know, focused on the action. Now, I mean, even with those action games, as proud as I was, I missed something. And it's something that even if you aren't a streamer, you can kind of feel in a lot of these video games. Something that's in there at a deeper level. Of course, let's stop and realize that some games can have a little too much impact and a little bit of an art that's not... Uh, not mainstream enough for most people, okay? I mean, there's games out there that I cringe when I looked at what some of the single player was, but, you know, I can't deny I got in there and did a, enjoyed a whole lot of the multiplayer. And again, there I was enjoying the action, but there was still an art. They'll tell something from a different perspective. Maybe it's perspective that you don't want or you're not ready for, but it's out there. I'm going to tell you that you can't underestimate the storyline. I mean, I always thought that's pretty important anyways. And sometimes we're willing to forgive it. We'll go into an action game and we're really not expecting that great of a story. We don't need one. But storylines can have an expression 
that can really draw you in, even to a game that maybe wouldn't normally be your style. Now, a good point of discussion, a question for you as a viewer, might be when you look back, what game was it that impressed you with uh, a storyline? No matter how much action and adventure and other elements in it that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily equate to the storyline. Maybe you're trying to get points, you're just trying to level up, but something in which the story kind of helped wake you up and tug at you a little bit. Now for me, old as I am, if I got to go back to a game that impressed me with a deeper story, and I got to go way back to a Commodore 64, and back then, the games that you had on a Commodore 64 didn't have a whole lot of programming or writing and anything involved with them. I mean, just the graphics. Now, don't get me wrong. In Ultima 4, you could dive into dungeons. You could level your character. But here was the shocker. There was no main enemy that you had to defeat in some climactic battle. None. There were monsters and there were dungeons, and so very kind of a open sandbox play style that you could get into, and there was a way to beat the game, but it wasn't by a physical threat that you were trying to beat. It wasn't against some big monster. In Ultima 4, the only way you could win the game was you were on a quest, a pilgrimage, you had eight virtues and your character had to live up to those eight virtues and basically be a nice guy and they could complete the quest line. Even the character creation was different because you didn't say I'm going to be a fighter, a wizard, a rogue. You actually were balancing out those eight virtues with this gypsy in a wagon. She would say, okay, do you pick honesty or compassion in this case and she'd give you an example of a conflict and how you decided that end up suddenly throwing you into a character class you know a unique approach definitely for the time I spent the hours and had a lot of entertainment playing with Ultima 4 and like I say I was just truly deeply impressed with the fact that you're just trying to be a good person and that you're not going to beat the game unless you're being a virtuous person at it. So now we're getting into the heart of my discussion and how I had discussed these computer games as art forms. Because, like I say, after doing those actions, those shooters, uh, 50 episodes of that for my guild, during that time, too, I'm watching other streamers. I'm watching the games they're playing. I'm watching what they're doing. I guess a new trend started with me, one that wasn't just the action games and the kind of games that some people might normally view video games as, but stuff that took you deeper, that had impact, that had emotion, that could draw expression from you. And now this is where... We're going to be getting into a few spoilers for the following games. Now, I'm not going to be giving away any major spoilers here. Both The Last of Us and Life is Strange are really good games. And I advise people go into playing them blind. Don't try to find out anything too much into detail about them. Take it face value and just leap in and let yourself be surprised. These stories got a heck of a ride. Now, on to the uh, in-depth about these. I started getting drawn into watching gamers play games like The Last of Us. All right? When I think about myself, it's like uh, people talk to me about this TV series or that TV series. They catch, they catch Game of Thrones, um, oh, the Vikings, or any of these other programs that they know I'd probably fall in with. I'm like, even if I get the chance to kind of see them on Netflix and that, I find myself not devoting the time to them. But I tell you, the bane of my existence is late nights after work on YouTube and I'm clicking one more thing, I'm clicking one more thing. And uh, it's usually gaming videos like this one. 
I've gotten to watch a bunch of streamers play games like The Last of Us. And because I didn't get to play it, you know, it was, it still hasn't come past PlayStation, and I don't have one. But I would see people play this game, and very early on is one of the emotionally impacting moments of a video game. When The Last of Us came out, and people that didn't know what they were getting into uh, got emotionally invested into the game really quick. And when the game really took off, it left people in, a st in kind of a state of shock, and even in some cases, tears, with what they had just seen. And the game had emotional impact after emotional impact. A lot of things further down that line. Now, don't get me wrong. Last of Us also has a lot of action. A lot of action. A lot of stealth. A lot of combat. But it also ties together into a storyline. And I must say, it just was a guilty pleasure. I find myself riveted in watching these other streamers going into it blind and seeing how th their eyes when they react to the certain situations. Guilty pleasure. Now one would also tell the emotions and if you haven't played the game, you don't want to check this out until you do. Uh, but they've already advertised the sequel and when it came on, man, what a reaction from the crowd that was watching it live. I can only hope that that somehow, even though this is Sony's baby, that I can get a hold of it on the PC and Steam because I would want to go into playing the sequel blind and seeing and, and putting myself through that. Well, one can only hope. Now, between Last of Us and Life is Strange, they both have an important story to tell. Now, along with The Last of Us, I found myself fixated on watching gamers play Life is Strange. Now, even though both these games were, in a way, you know, the, the player was on the rails of the roller coaster. Now, granted, uh, Last of Us didn't tend to have any decisions. It was, you know, action sets mixed with scenery. Life is Strange actually offered the player chances to change the story how they saw fit, even though the narrative was still going to be taking a certain course. Still, it was amazed at the decisions uh, that a player could run into. It's very similar for players that have also ran into Telltale games, where there are several decisions you can uh, make that can affect the outcome. And later on, you can even see what percentage players other players who have played it, you know, how they made some of the same decisions. I think one thing that also attracted me to Life is Strange, I mean, at first glance, you, you wouldn't think it would. A lot of it is still based in this girl with teenage decisions in a school, dealing with school drama, but she finds a that she has a superhero type ability. And that you find out early on, kind of you know, hooks the hook, hooks the player. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm a super, I can be a superhero. So I'll try to say as best I can without delving into too many spoilers. As you go through this game, uh, there's one thing after another that still kind of shocks you. There's a missing person involved. There's a reunion with an old friend that the protagonist hasn't seen in years. And even as she's doing little things to try to be a superhero with her powers uh, she finds it can very often backfire on her in very unexpected ways the emotional investment in this game can bring you to a new level at a few different cases in the game where all of a sudden out of the blue you you find yourselves with even people's lives at stake in, in ways you can't explain. You know, you, you, okay, you think already superhero I'm saving lives. No, this is a teenage girl that happens to have a power that she can't totally control. 
uh, that can have unexpected consequences. And yet she does find herself thrust into situations where uh, lives are at stake. Not only that, but in heart-wrenching ways where, you know, to, to go with her through these de decisions. I think I said it before, guilty pleasure. So if someone listening to this has not played Life is Strange, I encourage you, if you can get it cheap on Steam right now, go grab it. It's more than worth the price of admission. And then make sure you film yourself doing it and put it on YouTube so I can watch it. I want to be able to log on and again see how new streamers and that run into this game and see how their choices are. I use words like art, emotion, impact. Because we're going beyond those like arcade games in which you're just scoring points or surviving to the next level. We're talking about now games that can make you feel emotions, can make you think, philosophical thoughts. Games that make you get emotionally invested in them beyond, you know, when your quarter's in the slot. When I heard that Life is Strange had a prequel coming out before the storm, I jumped right in on that pre-order, and I've been glad to stay blind to anyone else's gameplay, at least until I did Episode 1, Episode 2, hopefully Episode 3 coming out soon. And I've been liking the emotional tugs on that game. Sad and especially because you kind of know already what's going to eventually happen by the time Life is Strange roll around. And if you don't, I'm not spoiling that. Again, just a guilty little addiction to stay in uh, Arcadia Bay a little bit longer and see where these storylines take us because it's pretty good. And they do give you something good at the end that makes you eager for the next episode. Obviously, a big difference from the arcade games of old. You are invested in these stories. It's certainly worth noting that while some people are still debating ga video games as an art form, there's video game makers that have embraced that and help pull it to a nice potential that we know today. Games like where your choices could matter, where your storyline uh, doesn't even always feel as if it's so much on rails because there's so many things you could do differently and different paths you can take in deciding how you want to play that game. It can be hard work putting the extra staff time and investment together for a company to give you something that, that feels like a true sandbox where your choice matters and uh, where a lot of things in the game can change based on your actions. That true role-playing aspect. We can look at these games that give you a wonderful array of choices, even to the point of your of <laughs> romances, and agonize yourself over, ooh, who's a romance option? Who am I going to pick in this game? Seriously. And there's games like that, which even if they're loaded with criticism, might have seemed like awesome games that wasn't for the fact that their predecessors set such a high bar to meet. As connoisseurs of video games, uh, fans such as myself, we want to be invested in the story. We want that art form that's not just the visual art, costume art, but we want to play in a tapestry of art and be a part of that painting and enjoy it. And out there is both a streamer and a person who loves to go out and watch streams. You've got an array of games that are like a, a sandbox. You walk out into the wasteland, find different ways that you're able to tell a story or go off and do your own thing. And some of these sandboxes, case in point, uh, game developers are leaving it open for players to have mods. It's amazing how much that uh, the community of fans have come out also with mods. You know, game modifications that they can go out and add things to a game and play around with it. These days, we're diving into games that are like our own fantasy world playground, where whether you mod or not, you can feel like you can get in there and have fun with a lot of stuff. And granted, all that is great for me as both, like I said, a person who plays them, a person who broadcasts them, a person who watches other people go through them. 
Now, as Hearth, though, I'm talking about the games that really pull you into a story, uh, that surprise you, make you wonder, you know, make you feel emotions. They might have a lot of action, skills you can do, maybe a little bit of choice in how you're going to complete it, but at the end, they're going to surprise you. They're going to be, they're going to be entertaining you. They might even inspire your creativity. Now, sometimes the game itself doesn't even have to tell you the story. The art direction involved in its creativity can really set a tone and a scene that's unforgettable. Take 2010's Limbo. It's like they're going through a nightmare dream sequence. There's a twisted reality there. And, you know, it's action. There's a lot of platforming. But the scenery you go through is unlike anything I'd seen in a game before that. It is kind of dark, kind of brooding, and really sets the tone for the game. Even the uh, follow-up to Limbo, Play Dead's Inside, uh, the art direction and scenery in that game really told the story without telling you the story. There's no words in this game to understand exactly what is going on. And yet there's enough in the scenery in the background that you feel it. And it drives you as a player. I mean, you can look at the gray shades background of this game. And the ambiance it sets really just sets the tone. Feel free to add to it in the comments below. You know, if there are some games that emotionally impacted you that maybe I didn't cover or some games you feel that are art in themselves, maybe by their subject, their tone, anything. Feel free. I want to hear about it. Again, thank you for watching the video and the support of my channel. Feel free to check out any of my links and I'll be happy to see you back again and discuss some other subject.